Welcome to USSO's Eyes on the Fence. Hello and welcome to Eyes on the Fence, coming today from an increasingly cold London. Today I'm nonetheless excited to be joined by Oliver Gruner. Oliver Gruner is a senior lecturer in visual culture at the University of Portsmouth, where his research focuses on historical representation, cultural memory and the politics of visual culture. Through works such as 2016's Screening the 60s, Hollywood Cinema and the Politics of Memory, he has sought to investigate the 1970s as a period of profound political, social and cultural transformation. Today, however, we'll be discussing an event he is currently organising entitled The Whole Earth, NASA's Blue Marble Photograph, 50 Years On. This event is running from December 7th to December 9th across an array of in-person and online events centred on the University of Portsmouth and is funded by the US Embassy in London and the British Association of American Studies. Oliver, how are you? Thank you, Tom. Yeah, really nice to be here. Great, fantastic. Uh, first, the very, very basics, for those who maybe uh, are wondering what on earth we're talking about when we talk about the Blue Marble. Could you provide a brief history of the Blue Marble, the photograph, and why one particular image could achieve such popular currency and indeed be the subject of an entire three days of events? Um, what, what did the reception, the popularization of this image in 1970s America reveal about the political, cultural, economic, social um, concerns of that time? Why was it considered so impactful? Absolutely. Yeah. So just to provide a little bit, a brief history of, of the photograph. So the blue marble photograph was taken on December the 7th, 1972 by astronauts aboard uh, NASA's Apollo 17 mission to the moon. And this was the final mission of uh, the Apollo program, which ran from 1968 to 72. It was also the last time humans walked on the moon and traveled beyond the Earth's orbit and the photograph itself was released on Christmas Eve of 1972. And while traveling to the moon may have been the mission's aim, in many ways it was planet Earth that became something of the uh, star of the show in, in, in many ways. And uh, it is interesting to note that the Apollo program running from 68 to 72 is bookended by two iconic, very famous photographs of the Earth, the first being Earthrise taken by astronauts on Apollo 8, where we see our planet rising over the moon's surface, and the second being the blue marble. And in terms of what we can see in the photograph, well, first off, this is an image of a full disc shaped Earth, uh, perfectly illuminated and surrounded by the blackness of space. And it's quite notable that you can see within the image uh, the continent of Africa very prominent front and center. Uh, you can also see Antarctica and equally important you can see that the, the, the large swathes of the image are, are, are taken over by water and the Indian Ocean as well as the image itself being clo cloaked in cloud and in terms of why it resonated and continues to resonate so widely I mean the first thing perhaps to say is that the resonance wasn't immediate. In fact, the image had a kind of a slow start in terms of seeping into public consciousness. And while it was published in a few newspapers at the time, it didn't enjoy, for example, quite the same immediate widespread discussion as, uh, as Earthrise. Perhaps there was a certain jadedness with regard to the space program by this time and uh, the value of NASA's endeavors as, uh, as Apollo kind of was winding down. But also, as, as we have today still, there is that ongoing discussion as to you know the value of space travel spending billions of pounds to go into space when there are so many social problems on earth nonetheless i, th I think pretty quickly the image started to gain a currency in in many different fields and perhaps the first thing to say about the resonance of uh, of blue marble and as you say the, the the fact that it is devoting three days to it and also sort of devoting time to so many different disciplines in terms of looking at this image is that pretty quickly it started to resonate with a, a wide range of diverse uh, people groups organizations and we have uh, climate scientists and people interested in the environment um, using the image as a way of kind of thinking about the Earth's sort of scientific understanding of the Earth, whether that be in terms of illustrating their reports, whether that be even sort of studying the image for climate data. 
we have um, counterculture figures kind of interested in the image and in, in terms of sort of thinking about themes again, sort of the sustainability, the environmental movement, um, and so forth. Um, so, so this is this is a kind of an imp an important and uh, significant kind of resonating factor with regard to the blue uh, marble. I think also in in many ways the the, the representation itself, and I'm someone sort of very interested in. Uh, images and and, ha and the, sort of the ways in which an image like this kind of represents a certain sort of vision of the earth itself, um, whether that be in terms of discussions around the interconnectedness of us all and sort of global um, relationships, whether that be the, the, the very fact that the image does uh, foreground uh, Africa and thus kind of implicitly is questioning some of the, I suppose, the cartographic kind of inequalities of the past, whereby Europe and the United States um, were often kind of represented, at the, as it were, at the centre uh, of the earth. And uh, Robert Paul, who uh, is a historian of Earthrise, and he'll be speaking at the events, refers to um, the image, whether it was intended as such as not, as, as a potential sort of photographic manifesto for social justice and, and this idea of kind of bringing challenge in maybe uh, sort of ideas of uh, who, who's sort of prominent within within the globe and, and really emphasizing this sense of interconnectedness. But I think, I mean, also importantly, the image and it's it's not a case of us just celebrating the blue marble. And I think part of its resonance comes from the fact that, you know, today, as 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 at the time, there are questions around what this image and what sort of space travel itself is achieving and uh, whether you know we need to think about uh, the, the costs of this when there are issues and problems to solve uh, on earth and 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 thus the uh, you know the social the social significance and the political significance of space travel and i i found it fascinating sort of looking into the history of the time the extent to which nasa was so screwed into many of the political transformations. I mean, my own research into the sort of long 60s in the United States had, had focused very much on things like the counterculture, the civil rights movement, the feminist movement, um, and how images are kind of responding to that. And I hadn't quite f figured how much NASA was at the heart of a lot of these debates. And uh, I, 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 again, a number of the uh, the historians that we we kind of look with that will be speaking at the events and that have, have written on the subject, like uh, Jennifer Levasseur and Neil Mayer, um, have 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 really kind of covered um, some of this political significance of space and and indeed of space uh, photography in in really interesting ways. Thank you, Oliver. Of course, the fact that this event is being held from December seventh to December 9th evidences that there is still concern with those resonances of the 1970s, which you picked out there. Could you just tell us briefly, um, for example, why those resonances continue to be so important in 2022, particularly in a world that is increasingly grappling with the symptoms and challenges of climate change and climate catastrophe? Yeah, I mean, I, I think why today it continues um, to resonate and Obviously, with, with the climate crisis and, and um, amid such heated and intense discussion around around the future of our planet and, and the fact that this this image did become an icon of the environmental movement uh, and, and is an icon of the environmental movement, that uh, this maintains a, an interest in the blue marble. There's also uh, continued, uh, as I say, sort of debates around the the ethics of space travel, and I think also as as a visual icon and one that's been much reproduced through digital composites and and through a, a broader interest today uh, we, as Artemis sort of takes off and is currently broadcasting back images um, of of space of the Earth as well. Um, there's there's a renewed and um, revived interest in in what images of the Earth might be able to uh, tell us about what's uh, about the climate about the earth and uh, about the world around us yeah fantastic and i think it's worth saying that a lot um a lot of the people attending this conference come from a variety of intellectual disciplines you mentioned history there but obviously yourself working in visual culture in addition to the concerns that 
this image has getting picked up by environmentalists and scientists across the whole plethora of the natural sciences. Obviously, you've arranged a comprehensive and expansive pre dev and is uniting all of these disciplines. What has been the process of that? And have you encountered any particular challenges? Absolutely, yeah. From from the off, I, I was very keen to, to to make this as interdisciplinary uh, as possible. But as you say, at the same time, there has been, I suppose, challenges in terms of trying to bring together, br um, bridge certain sort of gaps between different disciplines. I, I would say that everyone obviously involved in the events, it's been quite amazing how enthusiastic and, and interested all those involved have been in terms of speaking and, and connecting with each other already in email threads in, in preparation for the events. We've had climate scientists and uh, and historians analyzing the image. And as someone who, who does spend a lot of time analyzing images, but from a very particular, I suppose, perspective, it's been absolutely fascinating to watch the ways in which a climate scientist would go about analyzing images of the earth. And just recently, there's been a an image from Artemis sent back of, of the planet Earth, similar to the blue marble. And what it's uh, enabled is some discussion about what images like this might tell us about the Earth's changing climate. And the climate scientist, this uh, is a colleague from the University of Portsmouth, uh, Nick Pepin, has been sort of looking at the, the image and, and thinking about the ways in which it may suggest there have been kind of changes and, and what this says about the, the climate itself. But I, I suppose in terms of um, challenges and issues faced, there, there was, uh, there's been some difficulty in trying to find, I suppose, a way of maintaining a kind of a focus whilst at the same time um, bringing so many different disciplines together. It, it helps, it helped a lot to have this such such this iconic image, I think, in a lot of ways that um, was familiar to many different people, and whether they immediately realised, oh, it's that image, or whether it was just a case of, oh, they see the image, yeah, of course, yes, this image, it it, it's, it became a, a, a real way to place visual culture at the the heart of um, a, a, an interdisciplinary debate and uh, as I say from my own background it, I, I very much sort of looking at the US history side of things and how visual culture fits into that but the more I was reading um, for for the project uh, and, and sort of discovering how central science technology climate science and, and so forth was to this period and how actually sort of science very much um, engaged with the political issues of the time, and that's been a, an eye opener for me. That that the science, many of the scientists of the period saw their work as a, as a sort of almost intellectual activism in 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 different ways as well. So there have there there have been ways in which we've found connections between disciplines. Um, there, there's perhaps a, a, a bit of been a bit of pushback in terms of well, what 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 is the aim? What is the focus in uh, as a um, as, as a project and how, how we could take it uh, forward. But uh, I, I think in, in a lot of ways, it's, um, it's been really great to just bring different people together and to see this sort of the enthusiasm to, to talk about the, the image itself and its, uh, and its significance across disciplines. Yeah, great, great. And that all, considering the, the expansiveness of this event, really bespeaks the interdisciplinary potential of this particular emblematic image. I mean, it's worth stressing the whole of these three days are focused, as we said at the beginning, on one image. Obviously, that's an um, organisational decision in many ways. There are many aspects here, whether it be the involvement of designers, artworks, movies, photography. There's, for example, to pull out something from the CFP, a creative practitioner's talk and exhibition of artworks uh, this Thursday, December 8th. Could you speak briefly, because these are kind of formats which we don't see enough of, particularly speaking as an American Studies, American History website. How have you come to organise those kinds of events, those aspects of the conference? Absolutely. I think it's a, it's a good question, really. And the first thing I would say is, for me, it was just really important to go to the artists and designers from the beginning, not to see 
the the artworks and the design as a way of perhaps as a sort of illustrating research of of other of historians of other um, speakers, but 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 as very much a contribution to the research content to the intellectual content of the project itself. I, I work in a department where there are a number of creative practitioners, so I guess I've been open to a lot of the debates around the methodologies used by artists and designers in terms of practice research and that's been really useful so from from the beginning i was i was speaking to colleagues in the department and speaking to other artists and designers and thinking about how the works how their work can contribute and offer fresh perspectives on the blue marble itself and i mean that that extends beyond as well the contribution the direct contributions to the events but also to the promotional um, aspect of the the conference as well where i've been working with students in the in the university and sort of uh, working alongside as they develop some of the, the the identity for the events created some absolutely fantastic animated posters and very kind of dynamic promotional materials but again it's not just a case of i suppose asking them to create something once everything's in place but start embedding it within the process so it becomes an organic thing where the they will go and do some research and they'll think about well what do they want to say about the blue marble and why do they think it's a, a significant important and resonant image itself so i, I suppose just in brief really i would say embedding is key going from the beginning is key or at least this was for, for me the most important be open to the research methodologies that artists and designers use on on a daily basis and it can really add something quite striking and really exciting fresh and innovative to 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 events to conferences to research projects more generally great that's a model that um hopefully other conferences in this day can emulate going forward because looking through the CFP and looking through the schedule that you've uh, collated here, you can see just the potential of adopting that mindset from the very beginning and what that can bear out in terms of the final results of it. Obviously, this event is to mark the 50th anniversary of the Blue Marble 50 years on. I'm thinking a lot listening to this about the resonances that it has in this current moment, just given the malleability of all these issues, particularly climate change and the environment, which we're talking about now, what kind of resonance this could, this image could potentially have for the 100th anniversary in 2072, where we'll be looking at a very, very different planet. What takeaways do you hope those engaging from all these different disciplines, particularly those coming from a public perspective, what takeaways do you think they can have from this 50th anniversary stock taking that may stand us in greater stead for the next 50 years? I think first of just as the blue marble has been a springboard for so many discussions throughout the years i i very much hope for, for for public for those for participants alike that the image and our events will enable some really in-depth interesting exciting discussions about issues such as the the the, the environment uh, the ethics of space travel the centrality of photography and visual culture in terms of politics, in terms of society. I, I really hope it, it reaches widely. We've tried to um, engage with different groups from, as you say, students to artists, designers. We, it's obviously open to the public. We have someone creating materials for primary school children, a workshop as well, which we're going to have available on the workshop, uh, excuse me, on the website. Um, and and there will there will be sort of materials and activities and and, and I think I mean it's it's such a resonant interesting image for so many different people that I I, I hope it, it there will be some interest in that I hope I hope there'll be as as you say kind of an interest in the artworks and the and the works of design and and how they can contribute toward society can enable social change and uh, can really kind of impact the way we think about broader issues of the day as well. Great. Um, well, thank you so much um, for providing that profile of this event. Um, as we say, it will be held at the University of Portsmouth, both online and in-person components from December 7th to December 9th. That's Wednesday to Friday of 
this week. So, Oliver, thank you. Well done on all the organisational achievements made thus far and best of luck with these three days of fascinating and promising looking talks. Thank you, Tom.